I'm Gold Derby editor Daniel Montgomery here with Judith Ivey from the film Women Talking about a group of Mennonite women who are deciding how to respond uh, to a series of assaults perpetrated by the men of their community. Uh, what did you think of this story when you first read the script? Well, it was shocking. I, you, you think in the 2010, 2008, when it, the, the actual incident it's based upon, um, uh, you just think that doesn't happen and that it couldn't happen, that um, we're also, uh, let's say, educated, which of course these women weren't, that, um, and that we all have a certain amount of control and power over our lives that this wasn't possible, uh, but indeed, not only was it possible, but in that particular, you know, cloistered community, it was probable, so. At what point uh, in the process were, were you cast? Was there, you know, a lot of the actors already signed up for the film? Uh, were you early to sign on? I think I was one of the later ones, uh, unique to my situation. They first reached out to me to consider the role of Scarface. And in between meeting them on Zoom, because we were in the middle of COVID, um, Frances decided that she wanted to play Scarface. And because she was in a producing capacity, she had enough on her plate. And so then they asked me if I would read for the role of Agatha. And of course I said, yes. So, And then it was offered very quickly after, um, uh, uh, meeting them and reading in, on Zoom, it was, um, uh, as, I, as I've heard Sarah, Polly say, uh, she wanted to have sort of everybody in place in her head before they actually made the offers to everyone. And I know I've heard other actresses say, I, I met and read for it, and then I waited and waited and waited. So uh, fortunately, I didn't have to wait because I may have been one of the last ones. Um, and, you know, since this is about uh, a Mennonite community, uh, you know, did you do research into the faith to kind of understand because it's such an important uh, aspect of, of these women and their uh, decision making? I did. I uh, because, again, we were in the middle of covid your churches were not meeting. And I found a Mennonite uh, virtual church service. And so I made a point of attending it on Zoom and uh, uh, seeing what, what were the tenets, you know, what, what did they talk about when they were at church? Now, it was not old Mennonite, which is much more what this community and the story is. Uh, this was more modern day, but their tenets really are, uh, you know, pacifism as is talked about in the film. Um, there was a very uh, gentleness about it. I, I, I was uh, warmed by it, uh, hearing them talk about this and that. And they were also very community driven, uh, lots of programs, despite it being in the middle of COVID, they had come up with all kinds of Zoom programs for children, for their elderly uh, and uh, people, uh, th this particular Zoom meeting was three different churches in three different parts of the country, and they had, you know, joined forces in order to um, keep going to church. Uh, and, you know, of course, you're uh, working with uh, writer-director Sarah Polly, um, and, you know, and this being such an actor-driven, uh, character-driven film, uh, is it helpful to have a director, a filmmaker, who is also herself an experienced actor? I think so. Um, it, it, they understand your process, you know, they understand what your task is. And uh, in Sarah's case, I can't sing her praises enough of her respect that she extends to everybody. And there is uh, no sense of, uh, well, I'm the director and I'm in charge. It doesn't mean she wants to do every single thing you want to do. She's very precise and and, and has done her homework so that she knows what she wants, but she listens and entertains 
every suggestion or even what you are bringing to a moment. And if you say, well, here's what I, why I'm doing it, she's got the language. You know, a lot of times directors who have not acted don't have the language. So they don't, they can't communicate to you what they actually want you to do. And Sarah is, you know, a Svengali. I mean, she knows inside and out how to get that from you. I, I, I've, uh, I'm from, I consider myself from the stage first and um, I've made many movies, but I've, I've never been a fan of me in the movies. And I could watch myself over and over in this movie. And I attribute it totally to Sarah Pauly. And uh, that uh, theater experience, uh, you know, this film sometimes feels like, you know, it could it could very well be a play. You have uh, these characters uh, in mostly one location, this hayloft. Uh, do you think that uh, that theater experience really helped you, uh, you know, kind of with the process of this film? Definitely. Uh, scenes in the theater are a lot longer. Uh, sometimes uh, the whole act is one scene. Uh, and so the the um, what um, I can't think of the great word. You're, the the length of it is not intimidating, and we had really long scenes um, that uh, covered a lot of ground, a lot of turns, a lot of changes, and um, uh, I know that certainly aided me um, being able to hang in there and not have it all broken up. I actually have a problem when it's their short little scenes, I, I'm i used to that length. Endurance, that's the word I'm looking for, endurance. Um, and did you have a, a lot of rehearsal time with your co-stars or did you really just jump in and, and develop these relationships as, as the film went along? No, we had a one week of Zoom uh, where we were, you know, like the Brady Bunch all stacked up with each other. And then the next week we went into the studio, into that big loft and did a lot of blocking and uh, played around with scenes, uh, moving movement within the scene uh, to, to keep it interesting, you know, and making sure it was um, what uh, authentic and not just for the camera. Uh, it didn't always stick when we actually shot the scene, but by that time we had figured something out that was better, uh, or Sarah had. And um, so we got to know each other over two weeks before we ever rolled uh, any film. And when we first started shooting, we were on location. So a lot of those big shots and sweeping shots were what we were doing first. And I think that that was a great way to do it because then by the time we were, we were really uh, a group once we started getting into the hayloft. Uh, and with uh, so many characters and so much dialogue, were there a lot of you know different takes, a lot of of angles, uh, you know, for for every scene, and and you know how how involved was that process? There were a lot of takes. You can imagine coverage, each person getting their moment. And there were nine to 11 of us many times in a scene. Uh, there, I know they counted one scene that was particularly long. I think it was 11 pages long. And by the time we covered everyone and the various angles, the masters, the all of it, it was uh, 120 takes just for that one scene. And what was remarkable, we, we've all commented on this, was everyone was there 110% each, each take. It never ever faltered uh, that you felt like, well, I'm not on camera, I can sort of sit back and just say my line. Everyone was pitched and ready to go to make sure the person on camera who had been waiting quite a while because sometimes I think that one actually that 11 that took three days to shoot it so um you know somebody got their due on Tuesday and then the somebody else got theirs not not until Thursday but we all were there for each other 
It was uh, a, a truly a, an Olympian feeling. <laughs> uh, and, and when, you know, a lot of times there are a lot of characters on screen at the same time. Uh, you know, as you said, a lot of takes where a lot of actors are, are, are speaking. Um, what, what's the, you know, feeling when you are sort of playing a reactive role and, and, and you know, supporting other actors who are speaking and, and, and bringing that, uh, you know, internal life of your character out through, through reactions? Well, it's one of my favorite parts of acting is listening uh, because it's just as involved as when you are the speaker. And uh, it, 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 I love figuring out the, the modulation and playing around with is, do I find this funny? Do I find it tragic? Uh, if I find it funny, do I actually laugh? Do I just smile? But the variation on a theme is so much fun to me. Um, and uh, so I always look forward to being the, <laughs> the quiet one um, taking in that all those debates, all those discussions uh, and figuring out if I am a silent person through most of this scene or at these moments where it's getting heated, then what happens to me that triggers me, which happens with Agatha quite a bit of trying to quell the anger and quell the, the upset and keep the group, you know, centered. Um, it's, uh, it's a great challenge. It's just as much fun as when you have some powerful speech to give. Uh, and I, I can imagine, you know, just the telling this story uh, uh, of women who have had their power taken away from them in this, in this profound way, taking it back from, from themselves and, and actually deciding their own fates together. Like how powerful is that just you know, in general, as a story to be able to tell. It was very powerful. I mean, you don't go to work every day and think about it, but um, uh, I know when we've, when the film was completed, um, uh, Sheila and I have talked about this, Sheila McCarthy, my, my other, uh, uh, we've been jokingly saying old fart in the movie. Um, sh uh, we had a, a wonderful scene saying goodbye to each other. And it was actually our last scene as actors together. And uh, that would be the, the last day for, for me. She had one more scene to shoot after that. But um, it, it was, I have to say there wasn't much acting going on because we were genuinely saying goodbye to each other, knowing that that was uh, the completion of this powerful story. And, um, and we had already shot the location of being in the wagons and leaving. And that had a very powerful feel to it. We didn't have that beautiful music uh, in our heads at the time, but you, you had this great sense of what a journey these women are going to have and what they went through to make that decision, even though that was shot at the beginning of the movie. Um, there's just a, uh, so much symbolism in the, in the movie that one could would get, carry you through even when you were saying it's time to have tea and coffee you know it's that was even a symbol in many ways um and and this being you know primarily a film about uh women's agency uh you know but it's so much about how men are uh socialized and how men are brought up and you know to treat women what do you hope male audiences will take away from this film and from the experiences of these women? Well, I always say I hope audiences take away what they need. And it, there, there are men who this will speak to them, but they, they may not necessarily need to do anything. Um, uh, I hope the men who, who do need, let's say, to make a change, uh, are not threatened by it, that somehow this gives them permission uh, to, to look into themselves and, and, and how have they been treating women? You know, what, what are they responsible for that maybe it's been done unconsciously? 
you know, the, the, the maliciousness of the behavior in this film on the part of men, uh, I don't think most men behave that way. And so uh, I don't think this should ever be an indictment of male behavior, but there is a cultural support for men to have the power and to um, kind of use it the way they want to. I think most men are pretty judicious about it, but um, to give them a story where they weren't, where they it was malicious and abusive and controlling and hurtful uh, uh, is certainly a, a great mirror to hold up and say, well, I know I don't, I don't do that, but what else am I doing that in some way is abusing my power as a male as a, over a female? Because uh, it's insidious. We, we, we don't all, I don't even take in as a female all the ways um, that uh, I would be relegated to um, a less powerful position in, you know, things that you may think they're, they're mundane, but it does, um, as Rooney's character says, how would you feel if what you said didn't matter? You know, um, that's, a, that's a very powerful thought to have. Well, uh, I want to congratulate you on your work on the film uh, and the film in general uh, is, is beautiful. And uh, thank you so much for talking to me about it. Thank you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>